stuff in the ballot box. Mr. Speaker, um, I call Mark Patterson. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. I must say, just before I start, it's a little uh, rich being lectured on ballot stuffing by the party that came up with that perler of a bill, the lost luggage bill. <laughs> and I think that shows the contrast in our government. If this is a ballot stuffing bill, a bill that sets out to create a much better education system, then I'll be on this side of the House any day. Uh, so, Mr Speaker, it is a privilege uh, to stand and support on behalf of New Zealand First the Education National Education and Learning Priorities Amendment Bill. And, of course, we know that that, uh, that uh, amends the Education Bill of 1989. And I would like to uh, take the opportunity to commend Jan Tanetti in bringing this bill forward. Yeah, and yeah. in a time when we have been, I note there is some debate around about the prevalence of professional politicians coming into this House, Jan Tanetti and her 30 years as a professional educator and the value that she has given our select committee, both as the deputy chair and as the sponsor of this bill has been uh, invaluable. And she will make a significant contribution to this uh, this Parliament in terms of uh, uh, advancing our education programme and what an education programme it is. Uh, we are here, of course, debating or the, uh, in the third reading of the NELP Bill, but we have a wide array. This is a wide suite of educational policies that we are bring, bringing forward to rebuild our public education system. And, of course, we at New Zealand First are very proud of the work that uh, our very own uh, Minister or Deputy Minister Tracy Martin right. is playing Excellent. in this uh, space uh, and we know that she's done uh, a lot of work over the years on this and it's great to get her uh, in, in a position of influence so she can help uh, this rebuilding of our public education system. Uh, it has been 30 years since that Education uh, Act of 1989, Mr Speaker, uh, and it was tomorrow's schools, but they are now yesterday's schools. And we have done a lot in terms of consultation with the industry. Uh, the, of course, the hui that uh, was undertaken earlier on by the minister, uh, bringing everyone in to have a, a root and branch uh, look at our education system. Uh, and look at what we've already done prior to that. Uh, at national standards, taking those uh, systems, uh, that, that system out. And I, I, I just uh, go to uh, the NELP bill when uh, a lot of the things that the NELP bill is looking to address resilience, determination, confidence, creative and critical thinking, good social skills, the ability to form good relationships, participation in community life and fulfilment of civic and social responsibilities, preparedness to work. All of those things, or in fact, none of those things, none of those things were captured by national standards and it's very narrow focus on education. So that shows what we're trying to do on this side of the house in broadening the scope of our education system for the 21st century. Uh, of course, we've taken off the, uh, the charter schools, the partnership schools, Yay out of the system and brought them under the umbrella of the, uh, the public system uh, where they should have never left. Um, we've to, and of course, uh, this, the wider work we're doing with uh, tertiary fees and making tertiary education more affordable. And what has not been widely recognised is that most of that, the majority of that funding is going to people in vocations, our plumbers our, uh, and apprenticeships. Our, uh, our builders and the people that really need as we have this economy yes, humming along. Uh, so the, the, the theme of this is consultation in this bill and we've heard from the Minister how important this is and we've heard from the member when she spoke as a professional educator of how she felt disconnected from the system that her voice was not being heard. And this bill makes the minister, it ob obliges the minister to consult widely children and young people. And of course the minister 
referenced the words of Judge Beecroft, the Children's Commissioner, and some of the work that he's doing in talking to children about the education system and, and seeing how valued that voice is. Uh, teachers, principals, schools themselves. And during the committee process, I actually asked uh, the member about rural schools because uh, as a member of a board uh, of a rural uh, area school, uh, often our issues are, are different. We've got isolation uh, and we don't have the numbers maybe to to uh, d d provide all the services maybe the bigger schools have. And, and those area schools will now have a voice uh, that the minister is obliged to hear. Uh, and they will be knocking at his door, I'm sure, or the Lawrence Area School will be anyway. Um, so early childhood, and I will acknowledge the, the Joe Luxton on our select committee as well, who has a background in the early childhood sector and, uh, and the depth of talent that we have uh, on our side of the bench. Uh, disabilities, uh, support staff, a really undervalued part of our education system uh, and what a vital role they play and Maori and Pacifica, and we know that the statistics do not flatter those sectors of our community, and we must do better, and the Minister will need to consult widely with Maori and Pacifica during this, uh, under this bill. Uh, state and integrated schools. Uh, and I just would like, uh, I think it's worthy from the Select Committee submissions to once again quote the Children's Commissioner, the aforementioned Judge Andrew Beecroft, uh, when he said, hearing from, incorporating the views of children and young people deliver better and more robust decisions. We support the intention to create a more equitable system that support children to develop their full potential. That sounds pretty and that ensures children and young people have a say in the statement on national education and learning priorities. Uh, there was uh, this quote from speech and language therapist Dr Shannon Hennig. Family and children voices are essential in developing effective educational policy into law. And that is the voice that the minister will have to hear. Uh, and the NZDI, they welcome this because it gives students a voice and agency in the process and recognises the critical contribution and knowledge, expertise of the teaching pre uh, profession that will make and pri the uh, priority setting process. Uh, and I know how important that is. In fact, my own, uh, my sister and her uh, husband, my brother, are long standing teachers, 30 odd years, 35 years, even longer than Jan Tanetti in the education system. I know how frustrated they too feel uh, with those uh, provisions and the fact that the government often doesn't appear to be hearing their voice. And from now on in, they will. Uh, there was 20 submissions and they were broadly uh, supportive, I think almost all supportive, which is uh, a, a sign that this government is on the right track with this bill uh, and it, it, it enjoys wide support from the wider teaching uh, and education uh, community. Uh, and as I said at the start, this is about another brick in the wall of rebuilding our public education system. I knew you'd like that one. You're a bit of a Pink Floyd man, I'm sure, uh, Mr Mitchell, but um, yeah, so... Yeah, <laughs> but but it, it, it is, it's an important piece of work for this government. It is a priority that we said. I know a select committee, as uh, Denise Lee uh, referred before, has, does have a busy programme of work, and, and that is reflective of the importance that we see this sector uh, having, and the need to rebuild it. And some of that goes back to that uh, 1989 Act, that uh, 30 years since we've had a good root and branch look at our education system. And of course, uh, may I uh, say that Labor governments uh, have always had a, 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 a flavour of educators and teachers coming through, strongly influenced, uh, and those, uh, those governments supported, of course, here by New Zealand First and our confidence and supply partners, the Green, uh, are fully supportive of that. So the education system is in really, really good hands with this government uh, as we forge on uh, to 2020 and what a story we will have to tell the people of New Zealand about education and uh, the priority that we have put on and we will be starting to see the outcomes by then. So New Zealand First takes absolute pleasure in commending uh, order. the House 
uh, and uh, commends particularly the member Jan Tanetti in bringing this forward. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Order. Well, uh, no. I, I know this is light-hearted, but uh, the Speaker. Uh, in previous uh, decisions that uh, applause like that interrupting the flow of the debate is not acceptable. Um, also, a countdown is not acceptable. So um, let's uh, just return to debating the bill. So I call the... I call Mr. the Honourable Mr. Tim McIndoe. Kia ora, Mr Speaker.